Pa, thank you for joining us on the show, man. Thank you for having us. Yeah, good to talk to you again. It's been a little while. But, um, yeah, it's been. Uh, and uh, I mean, for obvious reasons, we haven't been here for a while. But it's even sucks that it's been even longer than that. Yeah, I think it was low. Was it uh, 2018? 18 is correct. Man, see, but it's like we've just lost. <laughs> it's like it's we, lo a we lost. A, we got part of our life stolen. Mm. So e even though I wouldn't say that we, for us, it was not a waste of time. We did good, good with our time. You sure did. I mean, look, I mean, you've just released a killer album. You've got EPs on the way. You've got, it's all happening on Saturday. Yeah, yeah we, we, we managed to do a lot during, uh, during the COVID times as well. So I was quite creative and busy. We released the Sabaton magazine. We finished that. That was a long-term dream to, to make our own magazine. So we made that. We made a lot with the Sabaton History Channel. We were active with that, even though it was tricky to film some stuff. And um, we, uh, yeah, we, we made an album and a couple of EPs. Uh, we made some shows as well. So I mean, we were we were doing well. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But how's it been back here in Australia? What what have you sort of discovered coming back? Because this is number. Two, this is second time, right? No, we've been here three times. Three um, times. Yeah. Yep. Actually, f maybe four times. Four times we've been here. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, every time we come here, um, of course, the the general feeling, the vibe of the people and the vibe of the country is great. So it's always well, very welcoming to come here. Mm. It's different. Everything is a little bit different, like how it's on other places. Other places are very stiff and stale and a little bit more, uh, I don't know. But just the fact that yesterday on the flight, the, the flight attendants were so excited to discuss heavy mail and uh, they didn't know enough. So me uh, and one guy of another band, we went back there and we had like a little party with them. And <laughs> they were stalking us with constantly with beers just to keep them entertained and talk about the different genres of rock and history of it and stuff like that. So education and <laughs> this. And they, they were so friendly and lovely. And it, it's just, it doesn't happen most of the time. I'll be honest. That blows me away. That blows that you come here. But I mean, people are that aren't in the circle of metal. I get asked all the time. They're like, "Oh, I don't, I don't understand it," you know. But once you, it's, it's like decoding a foreign language, I guess. And once you're in there, you know. You know, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, of course, I mean, you've, this lineup is stacked for this festival. It's just incredible. You got heaps of your mates like Gojira, Lacuna Coil, and who, who have you been sort of hanging out and about with when you're not playing? Who's who's your bros? Uh, okay, so, so the guys in Electric Cowboy um, and uh, Ginger and uh, Mill and Colin, obviously. Oh yes, um, yep, 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 yep. Friends from we are not we're coming from towns very close to each other. Yeah. So we're only like an hour and a half away from each other. So and we crossed paths in the past so it was nice seeing those guys i guess like festivals over there are, are really diverse as well is that right would you say that that's where you all cross paths the most i mean sabaton played hundreds of festivals so we played on all kind of weird festivals and simple festivals i mean that they are the true male festivals we played on uh, on like death and trash mail festivals we played on um on festival that is pop festivals and we have been on so there are there are all kind of them you know this is um i i think this is more like focused on punk rock and yeah. the this style and it's um it's uh, a little bit unusual to see sabaton in this lineup but i i'm very happy to be here and i love this audience so mm. i i think we're we're at a nice place Mate, we we've been so excited to see you again. Like a lot of like a lot of us metal dudes and, and ladies down here like love Sabaton. Like you know, you've got such an amazing following down here. Good so, to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's another thing is you come all this way. We are a little backwards here. What's the weirdest thing in Australia that you've discovered that you come back and you go, these guys are just strange. <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, of course, the what, what is strange? I mean, it's different. Uh, the 
it's very strict the rules of bringing anything into the country or moving things around you know well i'm talking about fruits or whatever things like that this is but that, that's just cool i think and uh, it for, fits a purpose but it, we are not used to it and there is nothing like that going on in europe or somewhere else so that's something that's different i i would assume and um um but and, and this is kind of a different the festival like traveling around it's not really common in europe to do this and uh, to do three shows in three days with the travels not also common so a little bit exhausting to be honest but but it works fine and you've got uh the sabaton cruise coming up in a couple of weeks too don't you yeah it's the next stop for us so after this we we go home and we prepare we just have a week and then the cruise shake off the jet lag and yeah it's gonna be i mean shake off the jet lag and um the cruise we play lots of songs so it's something different you know we need to practice a little bit before that and wake up some old songs um we play two shows and they're completely separate so um so it's like the longest set list of sabaton that's what always on the cruise how do you get the tank on there we don't that's the that's the charm with the with the cruise i mean um sabaton often play with a big stage set a lot of uh, special effects and stuff like that but on the cruise it's very naked. And I always think that it, it's um it's that's why it's so important for us to do the show. I mean, in the end, the core of the band is a couple of guys playing heavy metal. And if we cannot, I mean, we can scale it up to tanks and planes and whatever we do. But if we cannot scale it down to the core, we are not good enough. So, I think that the the Sabaton cruise is very important and it's also cool for the fans to see a naked band, you know, naked not not in terms of, you know, <laughs> yeah, being yeah, yeah, physically naked. Yeah. We we do have clothes on, but but we don't have anything to hide behind. Yeah. Some bands struggle with that these days too. I know that in, you know, in the press there's been bands slinging mud at each other because, you know, what if we've got a laptop and they can't play the show the laptop and stuff. Everyone does run things differently. But as you said, I think it is super important for bands to be able to just strip it back when they need to because if things go wrong and they do believe me i dealt with it last week <laughs> it will go wrong so i think that's that's definitely a good thing and you mentioned also about the fans you guys are probably the most interactive with your fans like and you offer so so much to them as well like in terms of, like you got this christmas was it the uh the uh was it the I've wrote it down here too. Look at me this time of morning. The calendar, the advent calendar. That's a word I'm looking for. Um, Twenty-four yeah, it's, days. It's running. It's running now. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we do a lot. Uh, we stay pretty active. Um, I mean, I like storytelling, and I like to create something around everything, and um, uh, to build a bigger story around everything we do. Um, and um, we have a lot of articles and you know the Sabaton History Channel and the history behind the songs mm. is quite important and so we, we do a lot of stuff with that and um, for the Christmas we are, we are running this one it, it, we started it and um, uh, it, it was a fun thing to do so we keep go running it I love the I love the promo video you did for it too <laughs> that's pretty good but you've also released the um, was it the pop up vinyl for Christmas Truce, and that's got like three different versions of the track on there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we we, we made um we we made a pop up of it. So um, we we felt that the song Christmas Truce needed. Uh, I mean, it maybe it needs to be reminded to people each yes. and every Christmas. So it's um, yeah, most of our songs they are about the bad stuff about war. But not bad stuff. I mean, there's a lot about heroism and, and good things as well. But I think Christmas truce, it's a good thing to come back for Christmas every year. And especially with everything that's going on at the moment. We need that. You know, bring people even enemy, en- en- enemy. Let me try that one again. Enemies coming together, you know, even of all levels. It's, it's something. So it's definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you've also got this EP as well, like the first of the trilogy. Now that one is called. I uh, wrote it down here as well. My million notes. <laughs> Remind me. We we released one called Weapons of the Modern that's Age. That's the one. It's here. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's one, one out of three. How how that come about? Was that written at the same time? Uh, not really. But we did uh, we did three. Well, we did more than that. I think during the COVID, we did maybe five recording sessions. 
So uh, we had we had time. We wrote a lot of songs. Um, we felt that it was a good time to record it as well. And um, then uh, most of it ended up on the album. We got a couple of singles before the Royal Guard, the Defense of Moscow, Steel Commanders. Um, to name a few, but uh, also the the EPs that are coming now. Um, so we, we were pretty busy during this time. Do you, do you have your own studio, like at Sabaton HQ, you've got your own studio? Uh, we don't have a recording studio. Yeah. Uh, we have plenty of like songwriting studios. So we got, um, we got um, a big warehouse in Sweden um, where we live during the recording and writing things. And um, uh, there is, um, uh, it's in our hometown. It's a huge place full of our stuff. It's a very fun playground if you are in a band. We got tons of stuff. We always post this like we don't really rent so much stuff. Yeah. We buy it and own it. So there is everything you can dream of, like gigantic lead walls and uh, PAs and uh, all kind of amplifiers and. Uh, I don't know how many instruments, but shitloads and <laughs> lights. And so, I mean, we can build our own, uh, not, not to mention we have our own festival. And so yes. all the stuff are there as yeah, well. We got stages, tanks, and buses, trucks. We, we got, uh, you know, it's, it's a playground for anybody. And the costumes that we have, I mean, I think we can outfit maybe 150 soldiers of different uh, ages with, uh, with costumes and stuff. So we are pretty... Pretty well stacked, so to say, and um, that's a fun place to hang out. And um, uh, we're, we're there when we are writing stuff and recording stuff. And uh, then we have another HQ where where the let's say the business is happening more, and uh, that's not in Sweden at the moment. So, see that blows me away. Like how you start off playing clubs like any other band, and you're just building up, and now you've just it's turned into something that's just incredible. It's massive. It's such a massive empire. Like, did you ever imagine that Sabaton would get to this point? I mean, you dream about, you it. Dream about it, um, and then you have to follow that. And at some point, you know, you realize that yes, we can make these things. I mean, I don't think we were alone with dreams. Everybody has them who starts a band. It's um, at some point you can realize them, and now it's pretty difficult to stop us. So whatever we want to do, we will eventually make it happen. Um, and but on the, of, of course we don't have the like unrealistic dreams anymore or goals or stuff like that. So they they seemed unrealistic 20 years ago. But if I say something now, I think it's well, very well doable. What, but what's where though? Like where can you go? Like. You're right there. You got your own festival. You just where would you, you know, where would you go? Um, I think there is always places to go. From from me, from a personal point of view, I already did the biggest show of my life. It's already done. Yeah. So I got that, uh, you know, covered the bucket list thing of doing the biggest show of my life. But that doesn't mean that you know I'm satisfied. And there is so much more. And uh, m while I said we can scale down and be just the core and be the guys in the band playing our songs, we can do so much more, and that's what I like to do. That's awesome, man. And, of course, what's next for Sabaton? Oh, we got to talk? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, hit me. I could talk to you forever, mate, but I appreciate you hanging I out I have a show. show to do as well. Oh, yeah, you've got to go rock and, and roll, and I've got to see you. Mate, thank you so much thank again. You. Uh, we love Sabaton. We love what you do. Come back very soon and see us. I'd love to. Uh, we'll see you again. Yeah, thank you.